This is Penny, keeping it real. And I have been so sick this week and finally got on steroids and antibiotics. I'm feeling better. So I wanted to jump on here because I just received a question. And I think it's a question that all of us can relate to. And it's that poverty mentality that I keep um, repeating over and over and over because we have to free ourselves from living in a bubble. We have to free ourselves from thinking we're the customer. We're not the customer. We have to buy things. You, you kind of got to know who your customer base is. Is it going to be, maybe you're going to do just career clothes. You're going to do um, maybe just posh clothes. Or you're going to do older ladies clothes, children's clothes. But no matter what you do, you have to realize you're not the one buying it. You're the one picking it up. You're the middleman. And you're going to find a very good home for this item. Someone that just can't live without it. Someone that just absolutely loves it. That's just ready to purchase it. See, I learned this when I had a gift shop back about 10 years ago in my hometown. It was called, called Penny's Twigs and Sticks because my husband would build wood stuff and put it in there and I sold wholesale purses. You know, I'd go buy things from wholesale dealers and I would sell jewelry and purses and things like that. Well, the lady next to me had also had a shop and I'll never forget her telling me she got this life is good, life is good items in. And there were people just coming in and buying duffel bags for $40 and $50 and $60. And she was just a school teacher. So she told me one day, she said, I put the price on there, what it suggested. And I can't believe that people would just run in here and just buy $40 and $50 duffel bags like it's nothing. T-shirts for $30, $40. She said, I would never pay that. But you're not the customer. I, when I sold my purses and stuff, I started, if I got them for five, I would sell them for ten. Good deal for them, five dollar profit for me. Then I began to realize, that ain't right. I got them on sale for five, but these originally sell for twenty, and they're supposed to double with this company. So I began to put thirty and forty on my duffel bags. And this is no lie, more people came in and paid for them duffel bags because they thought they were worth something. One lady come and she would write me a two, three hundred dollar check and just grab a few things. And I'm like, wow, the whole time, you know, I'm putting the money into my cash register. I'm like, wow, did I just do that? You don't put prices on your items to what you would pay for them because we get stuck in a poverty mentality. You may just be a poverty, below poverty, middle class, economic status. Honey, I have been in all of them. Not quite sure I'm middle class even yet. And so I know my mom would shop at the Goodwill. She would pay a dime for clothes and we were tickled to death to get them. But my aunt would shop at a place called the Red Apple in my town. And she would go pay $100 for shirts and my cousin would wear him to school and I would have my 10 cent Goodwill shirt on. But if I would have put 10 cent on a shirt in my store, she wouldn't have touched it. So you gotta realize there are people out there that know the value of your clothing. They know what they would pay for it. If it's gonna sell, this free people shirt sells for $179 at Nordstrom or wherever, then you're, you can put 80 on that shirt or 70. Don't look at people's closet and think, oh my God, this is highway robbery. There's someone out there that will pay that because they're used to it. And again, there was a lady at my church and we did Secret Pals. She has money and owns Orange Groves and, you know, has money. And so my sister, she got my sister's name. And my sister was like, couldn't believe the gifts that she would get her. But it's nothing for this lady to run in and get you a Brighton bracelet for 50 bucks. You know, when we're shopping at Walmart trying to find things for our secret pals. Or Miss Me Jeans. She, wore, she had every pair of Miss Me Jeans. And her daughters did. She didn't mind it. See, if you have $100,000 coming in a year, spending $20,000 on your clothing that year, it's nothing. But when you have $30,000 coming in a year, we're lucky to get to spend $500 
on our clothing, but you're not the customer. And that's my question to you today. My question is, um, my, is it a question or a statement? Don't price things the way you would pay for them. You want to price them with a mentality that, hey, there's someone out there going to love this. And also, the question that was just brought to my attention again um, is, we, we're such critics. And let's just say I get these jeans and I'm going to put these on, but I notice a little bit of, you know, maybe stretch that's kind of whacked out or something. Note that. There's somebody out there that doesn't care if there's a little uh, a string hanging out here, which isn't nothing, but I'm bad about that. I'll, I'll just throw shirts away when I get home because there's a stain. But today, I had a 3X LuLaRoe shirt, and there were three faint spots. It's probably the color of the material. And I told myself, nope, I'm going to put it up there because someone's going to love this shirt. So that's my statement today. And I'm hoping to start doing more little videos. But get out of that poverty mentality. You're not the customer. All right, this is Penny, keeping it real. Subscribe, like, and share. I'm at 280 subscribers. My goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers.